I should have put, of course, I should have put this thing on um, record. I'm sorry, grace and peace, everybody. I see, I see, I sent my brother the link. I just want to make sure, make sure I get everything correct. Y'all in for a treat tonight. These folk think they could just say what they want to say and get, no, no, y'all can't do that. Y'all can't do that. Shalom. Type of one. Type of one. Let me send. Let me send. I think I did it if I'm correct. Let me let me make sure because y'all know I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Um, Brother Dana, if you're on check the email and messenger let me see yes all right he say yeah he's long it on right now pastor leon what's good good to see you brother good to see you let me see i see oh man it's a few of y'all in here y'all are y'all ready y'all ready sister ashley what's going on is mellow in here mellow grace of peace man i see you hit me last night about midnight y'all people i don't know what time it is on y'all part of the country <laughs> about midnight hold on a second let me make sure. All right, my brother's here. Great and peace, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, my brother. How are okay, you? Okay, good to see you. Good to see you, man. We really appreciate having you on. We're going to try to pick up with part two. We're not sure. We're not sure how much time you have, but we want to we want to continue discussing certain things. What's the lady's name? Let me put, hold on. Let me see that. Y'all see what I'm going to do? Y'all see what I'm going to I'm going to look for the lady's name again. Where is she? I don't even know her name. She ain't in the text. All right. Miss Lady. I gave how many days ago were we on? I gave that lady. I said she got one hour. And then you see, I try to bless the folk. I try to stretch it out. You have one hour. What's your what's that lady name? You're the last four numbers in your cell phone is 8128. 81. I don't know if you can see these right here. 8128. Still in the pack. I, of course, I opened it. I, I think I need to open it up because I needed to get that cord. In the pack, I'm next day. And these are the Apple. These are the Apple earphones. These are the pros right here. I'm mailing them to you. You got to check your stuff, sis. You got to, you got, I'm going to give you an hour. Watch me on the show. Just the last time I'm going to say your number. I'm getting ready to go give these away in the street. Come <laughs> on, Brother Dana. Brother Dana, you were on the other day. And... A lot of people are shocked and, and and hearing what you're saying. A lot of people are shocked. There's been some people in the community and they've been trying to say certain things and it's not a racist message. We got believers and they don't believe you. They don't believe what you're saying about this message and that how some people that are of a darker hue can be Israel. Other people are acknowledging it all over the country, university, all over the place, people are discussing it. And we've had brothers and sisters that's been pulling out information. But for some reason, people are, have been attempting to group individuals together. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. But what do you say about those people? And many of them are black. What, do you, what would you say to those people that don't believe this message at all? Come on, sir. You got the microphone. <laughs> You know, Brother Brian, I'm, I'm at this place in my journey. And that is a revelation is something that can be only seen by us if the Most High Yah allows us to see it. Mm. You know, when, when we look at the life of Yahshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ, I mean, there were all kinds of individuals who could not see who he really was. And, and, and a lot of that is because of what we already have determined within our hearts. Um, so, you know, to my black brothers and sisters or, you know, uh, to just all of those that, that struggle with this revelation, you know, I don't mind you struggling with it. I just, I just ask you, have you done some due diligence in really seeking out facts. I mean, we, we have the internet right here and, and there's just so many simple things. For instance, you know, I, I questioned, you know, 
how do people of my hue mm -hmm. survive slavery under the Egyptians in in a uh. desert for 12 hours a day? I, I just know that if I go out into the heat of the sun for a couple hours without suntan lotion or covering up my skin, I know that I will be fried to a crisp. My skin wasn't created, the hue, that which is missing, whatever it is that's you know, in my skin, prohibits me from being. So sometimes, like, like the, the word says, God will use things that are very simple that if you really chew on them, you you'll come to an understanding so so with that do you know that the number one group of people that suffer from skin cancer in the world is australians mm. the second group of people that struggle with the most skin cancer are jews ashkenazi jews those that live in israel well what do these two groups of people have in common they both have white light skin what else is in common? Both of those groups of people are not native to the land in where in which they live. White people in Australia are not native to Australia. Our Aborigines are. And what tone of skin do they have? So, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of if you want, if you don't want to hear you'll close your ears off. And when I say close your ears off, I'm not saying just what Dana says. I'm not saying what another person says. I'm talking about you close your ears off to God, really showing you some simple things that have to get you to be at a place to say, that is interesting. That, that, that does make some sense. That is puzzling that all of a sudden we have a Middle East, just like having a South Dakota. But why do you need a South Dakota if you don't have a North Dakota? Why, you know, why wouldn't it just be the, you know, there's, there's just so many things out there that when you start to really put these individual things together, you know, in the court system, you don't need a lot of evidence, especially in your civil case. You don't need a lot of evidence to win your case. You just need enough to show that it makes sense, you know, or that the truth lies in your court. Now, we know that if we go into the criminal court, you know, you need a shadow, you know, beyond a shadow of, of doubt. Um, you know, uh, I don't know the exact legal terms, but just what we're sharing right now has to be enough to make somebody say, huh, there is some sense to what this, this man is saying. And part of the problem, hold on a minute. Listen, Sojourner Truth, I'm going to tell you all right now, religion ain't supposed to make sense. The more the hocus pocus, the more with well, this, this spell that the this spell that we call this greatest show that we call on earth right now that we call religion, it ain't supposed to make sense. So when you start talking in this matter, whole time Abraham been white, now y'all coming to try to shake up everything. Now y'all are coming to try to shake up everything because he's stating certain things and it troubles a lot of people. It troubles a lot of people. Dana, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to take my time, systematically walk through some things. Truth hurts. This is, this is, this is a troublemaker. Truth Earth says, you do me a favor, read the screen. I'm passing everything because I wanted to save it on this comment for a reason. Is your mind, is it some type of guilt? Is it some type of, maybe you heard some videos from the camps unwillingly and you don't know that you brainwashed? Could it be that you're brainwashed? Could it be that some guilt is on you to make you say the things that you're saying? Come on, brother. So you're you're asking me those questions. I'm adding them more to Truth Hurts questions. I'm a troublemaker, my mom and them said. Read the screen and tell me what you think about this statement. Good to see you, Tommy Collins from Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I, I know that I say truth hurts. They think he's brainwashed. Yes, a lot of people do think I'm brainwashed. Um, but again, if, if you know my testimony, nobody told me, you know, that you were the precious chosen children. God told me the night when I was ready to walk away from him. And, and now I recognize that he allowed me to walk away from the religion of Christianity because that's what was confusing me. His word oh, isn't Lord, I didn't tell him to say that part. Yeah. It was my religion <laughs> of Christianity that was confusing me because what they were teaching me, even in biblical Bible school, when I use some of my own common sense, again, like this, if... Christianity, as they mostly have taught, that you of darker hue skin are in the situation you're in because you were cursed under Ham. Okay? If that is true, then how then do you how do you then explain in, in Christian theology that the blood of Jesus Christ did away with, let's say, even the, the law in the Old Testament. So then you're telling me that that curse must remain on you then. But that's not how I believed Christian theology. I believed Christian theology that said the blood of Jesus Christ, if it was strong enough to defeat death, it was strong enough to defeat any type of generational curses, family curses, or anything that was placed upon us. So if that's true, then I'd like to know why you, as my darker hued brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters, and see, and I can make this judgment not because I read a book, not because um, I hung out with some of my black brothers and sisters. I make these statements that I make based out of 100% my own experience. Now, my own experience doesn't mean that is the way it is all around. But when I use and look at my personal experience, and regardless where I go, it seems to add up and equal the same. I lived, I lived my first 20 some years of my life in an all white Republican, conservative, Christian environment. I lived in these past 26 years in an all black inner city community of Chicago. I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been in the education system for 20 some years. I was a volunteer at the, at the uh, um, prison and Cook County Jail for 18 years. Mm. I have seen with my own eyes the injustices. I have seen the bias and the hate. And and so I I'm I'm again, I can't be brainwashed on something that I have seen with my own eyes unfold. A lot of people you see this comment right here. A lot of people say, with my, especially with my people that, that come from charismatic Pentecostal circus, circles, that um, God didn't tell you nothing. God ain't talked to you. Excuse my, excuse, I'm using King James. God ain't told you nothing. <laughs> God doesn't communicate with us like that today. Where's Sister E at? God ain't speaking to your spirit. God don't lead you. God don't talk like that. And listen to what my man said. My other man said, if you want to hear God talking, you got to read the book. They said, God ain't talk to him, Sister E, because God don't talk except you're reading the book. God don't speak to man's spirit. He don't speak like that anymore today. And a lot of people that are of that persuasion, they go with Hebrews. And the last day, God is spoken by his son. Marine freestyle in the book. But if y'all know where, y'all know where that's at. Y'all know where that's at. I got to go read in the book. I got the book right here. Um, well, what would you say to that? They said God didn't speak to you. 
And then if somebody go ahead and somebody in here that's ignorant, pull up Deuteronomy 28 and ask who fulfilled the pro who fulfilled these curses and these blessings, it's going to be a problem. What do you say to people that say God didn't speak to you? Or this is some type of part of the other question. This is some type of white guilt that's on your mind, and you wanna you wanna throw off um you wanna throw off the guilt. So you think you heard voices that tell you racism exists. Those people are being, those are, you think you heard voice, could you have missed God? Because clearly there's many educated believers out here that don't think God can speak to you in that manner. And then I'll get into the, you know, a later, later, later on, I'll get into the esoteric and why a lot of people are going to the occult because of what Christians are saying, statements like this, that God can't speak. Well, I mean, just, just to that statement that God can't speak, I remember Jesus saying, my sheep know me and they know my voice and they will follow no other. So, you know, now that's, I, so I still do believe absolutely that the Ruach, the Holy Spirit is speaking to people. Now, whether or not what I heard is from the uh, from God or not, I guess in due season will really <laughs> truly be revealed. But as of right now, that voice that I have listened to for the past 26 years. That long has, time. Long, that's a long time. That's a long time. It has transformed my heart. It has transformed my mind. It has made me who I am today. It has driven me and, and directed me down paths. There was no way I could have ever chosen those. So I guess at this point, I'm not going to stop listening to this voice that is also leading me where there is evidence that the fruit from my life has left um, uh, uh, or my, you know, has left fruit that has been giving glory and has been drawn people to the most high Yah. But as in a lot of people will say too that I'm doing this because I don't want to deal with my guilt. Well, the most high Yah led me to deal with this guilt um, prior to me truly embracing his calling on my life to serve him in the inner city amongst you, my darker hued people. And how the Most High Yah began this journey is he led me to Nehemiah. Okay, and if, wait a minute. Now, now you had Coco or right, Nehemiah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. And so if you look at Nehemiah's initial prayer after he had found out through um, uh, some survivors and those that were still in the city of Jerusalem, he had heard that the wall around Jerusalem was down and, and the city of Jerusalem was left in in dismay. It was left in shambles. It was left in a disgrace. And so when ne Nehemiah heard about this, the word says that Nehemiah immediately fell to his knees and he wept and he wept and he cried out because of that news that he heard about the great city of Jerusalem where his heritage was from. It then says that he prayed. And his words went something like this. I, Father, acknowledge not only my sin, but also the sins of my forefathers that have been disobedient towards you that has now left this wall and this city in such great disgrace. He says, I take responsibility for what I and my forefathers have done in disobedience to you, most high Yah. And so the father talked to me about how I, before I couldn't really be used by him, had to take responsibility for the sin of myself and the sins of my forefathers that have left you as my black brothers and sisters in communities that are filled with disgrace not because you are people of disgrace, but because white Christianity and white evangelicals throughout these 400 years have done 
everything in their power to keep you from building up your own communities and your own lives. We created the welfare system. We created the unjust correctional system. And when some of those few things there did not work, we literally walked into your cities like Rosewood, like um, um, Black Wall Street, and we destroyed your communities and killed you right there. So I took just like Nehemiah and I literally got onto my knees, Brother Brian, and I apologize on behalf of myself and my forefathers for disobeying our Christian values that says you are to love your brother, that you are not to do hurt, harm, or murder the commandments, all of those Christian principles. I then looked at how we just went, did not follow them in leaving you, my black brothers and sisters, in a place of disgrace because we have oppressed you, aborted you, enslaved you, raped you, destroyed you as much as possible. And then when you do more research, you will find out that Nehemiah, for all of my white evangelical family members that say, I'm not responsible for racism. I'm not responsible for slavery. I never owned a slave. Well, then please ask me why Nehemiah, who then found favor with God, took responsibility for himself when Nehemiah was born in captivity. Nehemiah wasn't even alive during the disobedience or when his parents or grandparents were brought into captivity. He was born in captivity. He never disobeyed God's commands that caused Jerusalem to be in ruins. But yet, he took responsibility. I took responsibility. I asked the Most High Yah, or God at that time, because I did not know this revelation 26 years ago when I went on my knees before God. But see, when I went onto my knees before God and I confessed this sin, it allowed him then in these 26 years to show me how this unconfessed white evangelical sin is still destroying the lives of you, my black brothers and sisters, because they're escaping it. I've taken responsibility of it to the best of my ability. And that is why I do what I do now, not because I've been brainwashed, not because I have some false guilt. I do what I do because I feel I'm much like uh, carrying the message of John the Baptist to prepare the way because judgment is coming. You reap what you sow. A nation and a group of people can cannot continue to hate their own brother and sister whom they see and yet declare out of their mouths their leaders or examples of the true living God. Oh, oh man. man, listen. Oh, oh man. man. Wait, am I echoing? Is that me? Is your phone? Is your phone, phone? Um, is your is your phone, phone on? Is my, no, is my I got phone my phone off. off. Okay, oh. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me. I gotta turn this down. I don't know who. I'm getting ready to say somebody else's telephone number. Who calling me and they know I'm I'm live right now? Um, does America? This is part of the problem. Does America need to repent? We're yeah. years later. We it's years in. Absolutely. Harris is getting ready to get up in the White House. Y'all got somebody up there at the space station right now, aka send to get in the White House. Are you are you promoting something that's not there? A lot of people are arguing that systemic racism is not even there. I'm asking you two questions. Can you prove systemic racism? One. And the second question is, does America years later because because them white people that live next door and the white people that live upstairs in this building right here, they ain't have no slaves. They didn't have no slaves. Why they need to repent? Does America need? A, are you calling America Christian America to repent? Because there's a lot of people, black and white, that don't believe Christianity could do no wrong. Because he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And automatically, they call that Christianity. Right. Come on, brother. You got the mic. 
I know you asked a few there. Does systematic racism exist? I mean, it absolutely does. And the people. You had a black president. Uh, what else do you pick? What do y'all people want? Just like I have a black friend. But see, this, those, those are the words, Brother Brian, just as you said. Those words, those comments, those statements reveal to those of us that, that have our eyes open that that person is a racist. Because I have been set free from that. I now recognize certain things that I think or say that is not right. I also recognize the things in me because I have been willing to live my life as humble as I hope I am amongst you, my black brothers and sisters, so that I can find out how much in my life, in my heart, and in my spirit is racist. I don't know how much racist thoughts or motives or, or actions lie in me unless I'm open enough to place myself in a fire or place myself amongst people that can point those things out and say, Brother Dana, I just want you to know that when you say this word or when you say this statement, let me tell you how that impacts or what that speaks to me as a man or a woman of black skin. Because, yes, even though my heart changed, I needed people around me, as the as evangelicals say all the time, iron sharpens iron. See, they're not willing to be sharpened in this area. That's why they'll criticize me. But yet, you know, I got people from back home in Minnesota, small town, white Minnesota, 4,000 people. And I brought five of my young men to Minnesota several years ago. And when church service was over, I heard it so many times, I don't have enough fingers or toes to, to count them with. People saying, my God, Brother Dana, you're doing a great job. These young men are not like the others. And my response to every single one of them was, well, what others are you talking about? First, I want to know what others are you talking about? What other black kids are you talking about? What other black individuals are you talking about? Well, well, uh, you know, Brother Dana, you know, no, 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 I don't know. Did you have a different group that came here that kind of messed up the church? Uh, did you um, go somewhere where there were a group of young black men that did something that's causing you to say that these five, six young men that I brought home with me for a field trip or for a, a get together and some time of fellowship um, are, are what, act better? I mean, I need to know who are those others you're talking about? Well, there was never any others, Brother Brian. It was the others that they have in their mind based on what they've seen on TV. And these are the same white evangelicals or these are the same even black brothers and sisters that think I'm wrong and want me to look at the Hebrew brothers out on the streets that make me as a white person walk by and kiss their feet. If we're going to look at them as the example of Israel, then we must also start at the basis of Christianity with the KKK. And the KKK didn't make black people walk by and kiss their feet. They lynched you. They beat you. They robbed you. They slaughtered you. So now don't compare, you know, what you want to use for your excuse as the, you know, okay for your side, but not the next side. So, so again, that was a little bit off the subject, but, mm -hmm. but brother Brian, I share those things because that in of itself is also an example of like white supremacy and seeing white supremacy is in Christianity. 
So they will judge, you know, like they said, these young guys aren't like the rest of them. See, and if you look into more, you'll find out that a lot of what my white people deal with is called white fragility. Okay. It's called white fragility. White people are the only group of people that can can group every other group of people together. But don't you ever group all white people together. That is why you have white people that will say, well, these five young black men aren't like the rest of them. But yet, if I say white people are racist, they're the first ones to say, don't you dare link me or group me with those other people like the KKK. Oh, no, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm not in the KKK. I'm separate for that. But in the same way, you're judging my Hebrew brothers and sisters by the camps or by those individuals on the street corners. See, that's the depth of, of what Christianity, white superiority together has done to brainwash, to indoctrinize, and to really damage the, 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 the ability to see. Because I, think that's, the, I think that's part of the game, though. Part of the game, yeah. even in certain communities, is to burn. And I'm not saying every uh, UA, but in certain communities and certain groups and certain people are supposed to be speaking in defense of Christianity. They they want to bunch everybody together with the camps. Exactly, exactly. But don't you ever put them together with if you with know, the Mormons, with the Jehovah they, Witnesses? They'll they'll, they'll have a heart attack. There you go. There that's the or even with the Catholics. I'm not a Catholic. Okay, but but then again, all Muslims are like ISIS. All Hebrews are like the ones you see on the street corners. But not all Christianity is like KKK. Don't but yet Christianity has never stood up against them. See, and again, that just goes back to, you know, like like I told one of my Christian white family members. Where is, if, if pro-life movement within the evangelical church is truly pro-life, I believe it's just anti-abortion. Mm. I don't believe evangelicalism or evangelicals stand up for pro-life. They stand up for anti-abortion because they are the same groups of people that complain and complain about welfare. And in my small town, People from the church will complain about these several white welfare families that have all these kids so that they can have more welfare money so that they can live without working and how that pisses them off and they think that's a joke and they want that money to be stopped from going to the parent. And they want, that, mo and they it, want that money to be stopped. Dana... All of this is part of the same thing. But but see, brother, why do so many? Because uh, I know a lot of black people don't even think that they're Jew, and I'm nobody here to shoot down that the curly hair people are even on welfare, making babies, multiple babies, are getting more wealthy and getting letters from the yeshiva, getting getting letters from their rabbi to go into the center to get more welfare. They got double, triple strollers. I ain't never seen no triple stroller till I went that neighborhood. But I don't want to talk about that because y'all gonna get me in trouble. You keep talking. I don't want to do talking. I want to make you the bad person today. Come on, brother. That's, but but see, the, the, the truth on that is this, Brother Brian. You want that parent, and I would always ask this, but wait, if the parent don't get the money, the kids are going to go hungry. But see, they, they don't care because they're anti-abortion. They're not pro-life. If they were truly pro-life, that church would not wait for the government to feed those children. That church would refuse to put in brand new carpet or would not put in brand new certain oak uh, 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 seating. They would take those thousands and thousands of dollars and they would back up their pro-life conviction in the Bible and they would say, look, local government, our people don't need your help because we're pro-life we stand for life, and we're going to make sure that these children, in spite of the behavior of their uh, parents, do not suffer. But see, Berean, 
this is what makes me conflicted. White evangelicals say that they're not held responsible by God for what our forefathers did in enslaving you. But yet they're willing to hold children accountable on the basis of the behavior of their fathers and their mothers. So there's the hypocrisy again. God won't hold you accountable because you never owned a slave. But now in your Christian values, you don't want this family to get money because the parents aren't using it correctly to feed the children, but you're pro-life and you're okay now with and actually are fighting for the welfare to be removed, which means the children will go hungry. But yet you say God don't hold children accountable based on their parents' behavior. But yet you're displaying in your own attitude that very thing. So, yes, God will hold you because, again, to the amount of judgment you give out, that judgment's coming back. And 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 we that's a whole nother conversation about the judgment that white evangelicals have given out upon you, my black brothers and sisters, as as evident as you as a black man, anytime you get killed, it's always your fault because you never comply. Every situation. Every situation you never comply. You need to comply and take it to court later. But yet these white evangelicals can't comply by wearing a mask. Uh, See, that's, this is that's not going white, good for me right now. That's the white supremacy. That's the white privileged mindset. And then to say that you follow the God of the Bible that talks about justice and humility and meekness and, and to... To lay your gift aside at the altar, if you find out that your brother has an ought against you. So this goes back to even what we've been talking about. So white evangelicals, you still want to say you're not responsible. I'll give you that, even though I've shared about Nehemiah. What about this then? Your New Testament says that if you're at your altar in your church, Offering up a sacrifice or a gift. That's Bible, y'all. That's Bible right there. In worship service uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. by Franklin Graham Jr. to ask God to bless the United States of America, make America great again, while you were there offering up your prayers to God, did you remember or don't you care that your black brothers and sisters have an ought against you? And according to the Bible, you are to leave your prayer, your gift at the altar and go make it right with your brother. Because the Lord says, I want that reconciliation to happen way before I want your gift or your sacrifice. And what's so crazy, it says if, if, if you think, if you even think they have an order against you, this is where the problem come in. If you even think that you need to go do A, B, C, go. and D. So, so there's a lot of people that could be following half of the Bible. But we don't want to turn this into a, the thing that's scaring me is that this message, what I'm hearing here, because a lot of people just say, why don't we just preach the gospel? That ain't the gospel. What I'm hearing here is dangerous because it could be political. If we start talking about welfare, if we talk, start talking about, because a lot of these folks scare me. They say they follow the everlasting God. They say God is sovereign. God is in control of all things. But they show enough word about who in the White House. That's right. I'm here to tell you the God in this book right here, he ain't worried about who in the White House because he's still the boss. But it yeah. seems like those people don't know it. So it seems like they're moving. They're the ones moving with a certain agenda. But but, but see, Brother Berean, the reason why my white evangelicals or Christians are so worried is because they know that they're living on stolen ground that was stolen by blood. When God gives you something, your faith is in that God or God for you to keep it. Or if something happens, then you recognize that all things work together, that God will... You know, because if he loves me, he will work it out. I might have to suffer. I might have to do this. 
But, but see, the problem is white evangelicals know that the land they're living on was stolen it, by, by murder, by blood. And therefore, they have to maintain their own power to keep it. If, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I did a video on this the other day. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Who want to come in here? Where my man at? Who want to come in here? Um, I didn't want to ask that Israelite lady. I can't, I can't keep talking to you because I'm going to, it ain't too good for me. It ain't too good for me to keep talking to you. Whoever want to jump in, hit me on that phone. That other lady name, I'm not going to say her name. She got one more. She got 45 minutes. Come on, brother. You keep talking because I'm done talking to you, but I don't want you to get off. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I just, you know, we... We've never, the reason why I, I know also that we've never really sat down as a white evangelical Christian church to really discuss this is because when I bring it to discuss, I get the door slammed on my face immediately. From your own people. From my own people, immediately. You know, just, just like somebody like you just said, you know, I need to preach the gospel. Well, you know, the gospel is about justice. Jay, get out of my get out of my comment section. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. know what I'm talking about? And and I told that to these white evangelical churches when they began to sever ties with me way before I came into this revelation. See, this again lets me know that it's more than just an educational issue. If it was based on education, when I came back to my people and I would tell them, guess what? The things that we've learned about our black brothers and sisters are not true. I've been living in a black community for 20 years. They would say, my God, Dana, thank you. We are people of truth. We serve God. We want truth. You would think they would embrace me. If they love truth in the inward parts. But they told me to shut up. And it's based off of your skin color. Period. It's based off your skin color because they don't even want to entertain it. One time, this one guy was entertaining this individual, and then all of a sudden, he asked the question, are you white or black? And he's like, well, I'm a black brother. He, the pastor on the other end, it complete, his, his voice, his attitude, and the way he started talking completely changed. So... You know, Brother Brian, after 26 years, it's it's kind of like you, whether they, whether or not they think they quack like a duck, walk like a duck, or waddle like a duck, isn't the issue. The issue is those of us that have been on both sides, we see it. We hear it. And there's certain things that individuals say, and you and I know right away, that is a dead giver of their ignorance of their true racist uh, um, hearts. And, and you know, we, it, it's, I, that's why I don't argue. That's why I cannot make somebody see what I see or what you see. It, 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 it can only, you know, that, that's why I really just, I'm, I'm, I'm living my life now because I can either waste lots of time by trying to make or persuade somebody to believe what I'm saying, or I can spend this time to speak it to the multitudes as big as the most high will allow me to speak it to for those who are suffering underneath this confusion of Christianity and underneath the lies that it teaches in white supremacy. That's my goal. That's why that's I say, that's, that's the problem. That's why I say that this thing is so connected to white supremacy. This Christianity that we have here is so connected to white supremacy. Oh. Hi, lady. Hi, ma'am. Hi. 
I'm so yeah, and, and then wait a minute. Uh-uh, I gotta mute her right now. And then the thing that like bothers me, Dana, this is my home girl. The thing that bothers me because I got so much men that listen, and I only got a little bit of women, sister Lewis and all of them, and and, and you're lying to them. You better not mute her, so they trying to abuse me. She can't come in here and unmute herself and say what she wants, but sister Foster, I send her the link. We got a problem, and before I even give the mic over, because I know I I know the interview is done, I might as well go get me some, make me some coffee, and let this lady take over. Why there are some? Let's be fair, Dana. I know some Europeans. I believe they saved. I got a few brothers and sisters, that, and they want to do something. But to be honest, they 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 scared of some of you folk in here because of these loud amens. They scared of some of the history and the way some people throw some things up. What would you say to those people? That they they because we can't sit here and say none of them have a good heart. None of them mean any well as a lot of them they give. I know Thanksgiving time, I know Christmas time coming up. They try to give in the inner communities, and they are some of them are Christians, and some of them are not even Christians, but they know have wrong has been done, and they want in their lifetime with karma or whatever you want to call it, because everyone that's it's, and you don't have to be you don't have to do good things, you don't have to be a Christian to do good things. And there's a lot of them that's out here and they want to do good things. They want to help in, in the communities and they understand that redlining and so many other things that have gone on in the past have contributed to it and they want to help change some things around. What would you say to them? Then I'm going to give it to, then I'm gonna give so, it to them. So you're to saying later. to white people what to say to them? What would you say to those that want to help? Where can they even begin to start? I mean, a, a lot of it is, is is building relationships. You know, I, I would get a lot of youth groups from white churches that wanted to come into the inner city to do service projects. And I was very, very cautious about that because, again, when white people want to help, they might have the right heart, but they come into communities such as our black communities and and if, you, and if I'm not careful, I'm going to add to the stereotype that black people are in their situation because of their own ignorance. And so I never brought white groups in and had them walk around my neighborhood to pick up trash or to clean up garbage because that only instilled in them that much more racism because then they might get the idea to say oh look at you know you come into my white community and we don't throw trash we don't have this but see what they don't realize is i'm not going to worry about some trash that's around in my neighborhood when at every moment of my living and my being i'm fighting for my life whether it's a police officer whether it's an education system that don't care about my children, whether it's about the corruption of the correctional facility that's trying to lock my innocent son up. You know, when you got all those things on your mind, the last thing you're gonna worry about is mowing your yard or picking up some trash. And so to bring groups of white people in to do these good deeds, I'm very cautious of that because it can simply it can it can really turn into this great white savior syndrome, which a lot of my white evangelical individuals have. Now, that is what you call white people trying to do nice things instead of dealing with the guilt of what our ancestors or our forefathers all the way up. And see, this is why. I cannot release evangelicals today. If you want to say you did not own a slave or that you've never been mean to a white black person, my my thing where you are guilty is that you still voted for a white man to secure white supremacy for you and your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. So there you're still guilty. Shut up, Dana. Be quiet but, for one minute. Be quiet for one. I'm gonna meet you, Sister E. I don't even know why. I brought you on. Because you want the truth. I don't even know why you're still a moderator. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why, but I Dana got to shut up. You don't come in here and stir this pot no more than it's already stirred. I'm the only know. reason that I'm bringing you on right now is two, because I want to heat up some of that. I want to get my drink out. Two, that's one reason. I like telling the truth, the whole truth. And that, that's one reason. The second reason is a lot of what's going on is largely because of you. 
I met you a few years back and you duped me to come on the scene. I thought you was a Christian. Then you fooled me and got on the panel. Wait, wait. No, 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 because you know this is the word that's out. You can't be a Christian and melanated and Israel at the same. You're doing too much. I'm going to mute myself, Yolanda, and I'm going to let her talk. You know what? Don't, you said Don't mess around. You know, I'm finna, I'm, you tell me. Don't that mess away. Wait, let me make sure my oh. button's working. That's the mute. Okay, it's working. Go ahead. Because you said Dana stirred the pot. I'm finna tip it over. So, right. with that being said, hello, Dana. Yeah, hello, my nice sister Eve. Nice How are you? you know what? I've met you because we're Facebook friends, but I go oh, by my. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. But you know what? I have another name on Facebook. Oh, okay. So, Thank you. Now well, I know you got my back. Yes. So I, I, in fact, message you. Let, let me explain something. Dana is speaking so much truth about the, around the history and legacy of white evangelicalism. Now, keep in mind, my daughter went to a private school, was a white evangelical private school for high school. Now, when you look at the history of that high school, ask me how the why that high school is in place, because they did not agree with integration and they wanted to segregate their kids away from the black population. They did not agree with it. So that's why a lot of those private schools popped up around the 80s and the 70s. Now, let's talk about past. This is not past. This is present. Because while my daughter was attending that school, they talked about slavery as if it was an indentured servitude yeah. type work. And my daughter, who understands history, turned the history class out. Because she was like, that was not indentured servitude, that was slavery. And she started explaining the very things that I was talking to her about to the point I had to come to the office and come pick her up. Because she started talking about, well, why is it that you had uh, buck breaking? Why did you have, I had to pretty much say, okay, kiddo, you can't go here no more. But that's not the reason why she left, because I needed her to get into a better music program. But that's, that's the problem. They want to mask the past and not deal with the past. True repentance is opening your mouth saying, hey, we did this and our ancestors did this. We're going to repent. And a part of repenting is restoring what was taken. Repentance isn't something you verbally say. Repentance is an act. If I know that this country was built off of the back of slaves taken away from Native Americans, I got to go repent to those people and give them back and restore to them everything that they lost. Have they restored it? No. They no. still fighting with us. They Have we acknowledged it, Sister E? You know, more white evangelicals will take a knee and apologize and weep for mm -hmm. the Jews during the Holocaust, oh, which we had nothing to do with that, if you want to be real. Mm -hmm. You know why they can take a knee? Even apologize mm -hmm. or even acknowledge in a very you know, uh, I'm really sorry. Somebody, really somebody's about. echoing a little bit. I let, it's just, is, your, is your um? Let me see if that echo thing. Go ahead. I don't know why. I don't know why. Jason Brown. I, I had this. I'm sorry. This Ms. don't. This don't sound Christian no more. This why they say it's not a Christian channel. This don't sound Christian. Y'all just don't sound like love. That's that's love because what did John the Baptist say? Repent, repent. We saying the same thing. Repent. We're not saying. Because uh, the thing is, I say this all the time. I have no problems with white people. I have some close friends. I have a problem with the system because the system can not only oppress me, but it can oppress white people, period. But the system was designed to oppress me. Now, if my white sisters and brothers try to jump in to help me, that's when they're going to feel the pain from it. It's not the people, it's the system. The system has to be destroyed. The system is not based off the principles of the Bible. The principles were based off of love God first and love your neighbor. That's not the foundation of this country. Because if you saying that you that this country was built on love, how when George Washington had slaves, when they lied and said the dude's teeth was made out of wood and you later found out they were slaves' teeth, this is the this is the forefathers of this nation. So you can't tell me that this nation was built on love. It was not built on the principles of the Bible. It was built off the principles of capitalism. Yes. And, and that's why they're afraid of losing it the same way they obtained it. Correct. And then they're afraid of going into the very thing they brought people into, which is... Slavery. That's, that's why our white evangelicals are afraid that that the words of Jesus Christ are going to come true. 
Those who led or live by the sword die by the sword. Those who mm -hmm. led into captivity will go into captivity. In captivity. Yep. I know that's Bible, but I, I just don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. I didn't grow up on this type of talk. So my, something on the inside of me don't feel like this is this Christianity. This ain't the way I grew. This ain't the way I grew up. Sister, you feel love in your heart? I do. Thank you, Yolanda Smalls. Do you still feel love? Why is it that when we speak truth, it's not love? But he said something made a lot of sense. Dana said this, and I was ready to scream. He said, they tell us to abide by the law. If they would abide, they won't get, um, they won't have issues with the police. But yet and still, you got a country that's fighting about a mask, a simple mask. They don't want to follow those rules. That saves somebody's life. Correct. And they're Including ignorant about the it. They're willing to put out guns. They're willing to fight about this mask thing. But but see that's that's because capitalism is a form of communism. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. And capitalism in this nation was for white people to get rich, to be wealthy, and to be on top. And it was the system was created for white supremacy, white privilege. Correct. And then we but isn't combined. capitalism from God? The, 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 a lot of the people that came, the early believers that came to this country, they believe capitalism and Protestantism was going hand in hand. God wants you to God wants you to be blessed. God don't want you to be that was an early form of the prospect. God don't want you to be blessed. Well, he may he maybe wants you to be blessed, but not blessed by that that maketh one rich or that add sorrow. I mean, you know, you you can't be blessed oh. when you add sorrow to people's lives because you murder to get that place. But but right. you know, we we then use Christianity because we you know my forefathers were smart, and and I hate to say this, but they they were smart like Apollo White. There's many white preachers that know how to utilize your loyalty and even your innate desire to follow and please God. Yep. yep. Our Christianity knew that. So they knew if they could, once we took your ancestors and we began to kill off those that knew truth, we started Christianity and we used your godliness, your, you know, I've been to Africa several times and, and I'm not saying all Africans are Christians, but I tell you what, there was God on every bumper sticker almost. There was in God, you know, we love God, this and this. And, and even, even with me living in the inner city, like I said the other night, I can be walking on the street with gang members and because they knew that I'm a man of faith, they were they would respect me. And, and so we use Christianity knowing that you as people have an innate love and desire for God. And we, to me, this is based on what I've experienced you know, so we've used it to now control you even in that area. I don't see too many of my white people that have just this constant innate love for God. Because if they did. Tell me if y'all hear an echo. Maybe I'm doing yeah, something. But go at that moment. If we had that innate love for God, why is it so difficult for us to repent or to even acknowledge the injustices that we see on TV when a black man gets the life snuffed out of him, not in 20 seconds, not in a blow to the neck, but after minutes of a man with his knee on a black man's. To me, if God is innate in you and in the nation in which you live, Watching that take place would have caused white evangelical churches across this nation to flare up and protest. If they really can. A cop shoot a black man eight, nine times. Okay, let's justify once. Let's maybe justify twice. But if God is innate in you 
and you see a man get shot in his back seven, eight, nine times, and you say, well, if he would have conformed, if he would have complied, yep. if he would have, there's no God in you. Because I, if I saw a dog get shot seven times, it makes my heart break because it's the loss of innocent life. Correct. To see a human get shot or get the, the breath snuffed out of him when somebody says, I can't breathe, and that don't cause you to melt in your heart. You already reveal that. Don't tell me you got God in you. Because even my black brothers and sisters have enough God in them that they can embrace me as a white man, knowing that I'm the very people that have enslaved you, killed you, oppressed you, and want to maintain my white supremacy. See, so right there is proof in the pudding. Right. If, if 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 you, my black brothers and sisters, were like my white family members, do you think I'd be living in the inner city now for 20 years? I've never been lynched, never had a cross burn in my front yard, never had graffiti say, cracker, white man, honky, get out of our neighborhood. But yet the guys down the street that hang out on the street corners show great respect for me. So don't tell me <laughs> when when the gangs on the street corners in my neighborhood have more love and respect for me than my white evangelical family members walking out of a church service have for you as my black brothers and sisters. Then, then let's talk about who innately has the love of God. Yeah. And that's and that's correct, because the thing is this and I know I come hard and it's only because i come hard and it's not just because of my people but something's going on now that repentance is constantly coming up it's coming up in the air it's coming up in conversations and and it's 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 really just telling people repent of the sins of the past and the more we say repent 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 the more they reject the more judgment we're seeing right now you yeah. can't tell me covid is not judgment it's judgment. you can't you can't tell me the economy falling apart is not judgment. Because you can't that's white evangelical yep. America's God. Correct. It's the economy. And Correct. when the economy goes down, so does their God, their nation, and their empire. And see, what most people don't realize, I as a as who I am, I don't want to see anybody fall. No. If you be white or if you be black, this is why we scream in repentance repentance and when we scream repentance I, when i scream and others that i know and i deal with when we scream repentance we scream repentance on both sides we're not just screaming repentance to to white america we're break, we're screaming repentance to our people because in order to heal you have to repent and walk in forgiveness and a part of the most high god dealing with us you have to show the same love that they're not showing your because what did it say? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Vengeance isn't mine. Vengeance is the Lord's. So at the end of the day, I don't bring about vengeance. I bring about the spirit of the most high God. You should see the light in me. My yeah. walk and my life should speak to who I am. Great example. And I'm glad I'm on here with Zadok. Zadok said something that made so much uh -uh, sense. You don't start. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh, hell no. Let me finish my point about the law. The law should be within me. My walk should show you how to live. I shouldn't tell you my walk and I should have the same love, compassion and patience of the most high God to help you walk the walk and be the person of God that you're supposed to be. So yet and still, at the end of the day, all of us are saying repentance. And when I say repentance, I don't mean just on America's side. I mean, on the other side, repentance has to happen on both sides of the aisle. But yet and still, true repentance is what's going on in this country right now. Yes. This country is hurting right now because we're dealing with a nation that does not want to repent. They speak God, but don't walk God. Walking God means to repent, to walk in love. That you see some black man in the middle of the street losing breath out of his body and the world saw it. And you don't stand and you call yourself evangelical. You supposed to be standing on the front line before we do. There, there you go. There you go. Or, you know, or I even I even said this to my white pro-life evangelicals. At least I should have saw you around the family, the mother. 
So even if her son was, uh, uh, you know, rightfully killed, where are you to embrace this mother? But what came out of your mouth as a Christian person was, well, we need to know the whole story. Well, how do you say that to a mother or to their family? You know, where's your love embracing them? You know, I saw the first real hatred in the hearts of my white evangelicals years ago before I even started walking in this life. And that's when, um, oh, what what was the, I just lost his name, the, the boxer that, that was set free from his supposedly murdering of that white woman. Somebody put that name down. I'm sorry. I, I might. I, I might. I, 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 I. It was Hurricane. Oh yeah, yeah. You talking about okay? The boxer. Yeah. Well, well, the boxer. I think he was years ago. Um. Anyways, he was represented, and he was found innocent from murdering that white lady. You know, the glove on his hand was too small. This and that. White America, where I lived went crazy. And this was probably in the 80s. Went absolutely crazy. Because they believed that this black man, after this long trial, was set free, even though he was a murderer of this wh a white woman. And, and I don't think it's Hurricane. It's somebody else that I'm thinking of. He's in prison. He's in jail right now, currently. Hurricane. It's Hurricane. Well, then he's no, he, no, no, Hurricane is out of jail. Hurricane is out of jail. My bad. Yeah, he just went back into jail. I wish I could. Um, I just lost somebody his said name. OJ. OJ was a football player. OJ Simpson, oh. Thank you. oh, he thank was a, okay. OJ. Okay, but white America went crazy and the they went, crazy. went flying. They went crazy because a black man see the court system was never created to allow a black man to become innocent. The court system was created to always find the black man guilty. And when that black man was found innocent, to this day, white evangelicals in white America will still say it was corrupt. They let that man go free because he was rich or because he was, you know, who he was, OJ Simpson. But yet white evangelical Americans have lynched, killed, murdered, and raped millions and millions. I, 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 listen, Zadok, come to the microphone. I ain't got nothing to say. Uh -huh. I ain't got nothing to say. I can't lie. I got to be honest. Small carrots. I ain't got nothing to say. Go ahead. <laughs> um, hey, hey, first of all, salute all praises to the most high God. Um, Sister E, thank you for the kind words and then pointing out something I said a few days ago that you were edified by. All praise goes to our Father. And um, Brother Dana, I want to say hello. Um, God bless you, brother. Um, um, actually, just to let you know, I'm going to say probably about three or four months ago, a dear sister of mine who has great love for you uh, here in upstate New York, her name is Kaya Israel. And uh, you, you actually gave her some space on your YouTube platform to present a couple of uh, presentations. She did some things on Abraham and the, you know, the redeemed conscience of man. And she sent them to me and said, could you watch these and give me your opinion? And I said, who is this gentleman with this platform that just let you come on this platform and do this? She's like, oh, this is brother Dana Stevens. I've been watching him for a while and I reached out to him and we conversed and this, that, and the third. And so I just want you to know that uh, I've been watching you for a while, bro. Uh, wow. Praise God for what you're doing. Um, I want to say this because I know that many people are thinking this, so I just want to make sure, because you haven't said this yet, but I just want to put it on record. Mm -hmm. With all that you're saying, what you haven't presented yet is that because of this belief you have and what the Lord has shown you through the word, uh, through prayer, and through experience with our community, you haven't said that because you believe this, you believe black people are better than white people. You haven't said that you believe that the African America, i.e., who you believe is the uh, a part of the lost children of Israel here in the Americas. You haven't said that because of this, they will enter the kingdom of God. So you haven't said, well, black people are Israelites, I believe. So 
they are they're just automatically saved and be, just because they're Israelites and you know this that and the third I haven't heard that and maybe it's because you're not concentrating on that but could you say for the record whether you believe because African Americans may be descendants from the children of Israel would you go on a record telling us do you believe that that gives them a preeminence over the people you descend from when it comes to walking in Christ and do you believe that your salvation is tied to whether uh, you get along with Israelites or not. Wow. Nothing uh, anonymous. Um, thank you in the super chat. You don't have to do. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. I, I don't even know. I don't know how I got these other two on here. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. You know. I respect you greater than me as a white man because you are the Most High Yah's chosen people. And when he spoke to me, he called you his precious chosen children. Because I have my relationship with the Most High Yah, I'm not jealous or upset that he has called you, you know, his own, that he originally sent his son for you, not for me, but for you. You know, he came for his own house of Israel first, you know, even with the woman, you know, that was begging and he said, I'm sorry, I didn't come to feed you per se. Um, woman, yeah. yeah, so because of that, I honor you and I place you in a place of honor and respect. A lot of my white folk, I would I would say to them the way that you honor a soldier that has fought for your America. That's the type of love, honor and respect I have for you. Um, the most high Yah's chosen people. I do believe that I am committed um, and commanded, I mean, commanded through the Bible to cling to you. I believe Rahab was brought into the kingdom due to her faith, but I believe she did not suffer the consequences of the fall of Jericho because she agreed through her faith and through her recognition of who God was, she said, I believe you serve the true God. So her faith was in God. And then she clung, clinged to the chosen people. And her evidence and her love for the Most High Yah's chosen people was that she hid your ancestors, the, the, the spies. She took her own life, her own freedom, you could say, and put it in jeopardy amongst her own people by, her, number one, her faith was in God, and because it was in him, she protected and she was willing to be used by the Most High Yah for whatever purposes were fit for him, his purpose, and his people, which also meant that it would cause loss to her nation her city. She knew because she said, my people are fear because we know what your God has done. But yet she, she did what she did. And the blessing out of that was that her and those that she brought within her home, according to the spies and the, and, and what they agreed upon would be saved. So I say all of that to where I am today. Yes, I have my faith in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who died for my sins. And so I want to live for him. And because I'm living for him, I now have to acknowledge some lies or some untruths that were taught to me through Christianity. Because I'm a white man and Christianity right now is a white man's religion, Christianity might not or probably could say wasn't supposed to be set up that way, but it, but it has, just like the N-word. 
just like other words that were not created to be a negative, but man turned it into a negative. So because Christianity is a negative to me due to the evil acts of white supremacist people that to me created a religion that is not following the life or the example of Jesus Christ, I can no longer be a part of that religion. And now that I've learned the truth of who the true chosen people are, the Bible commands me to cling to you, to have unwaveringly, unwaveringly, uh, what word am I looking for? Unwavering uh, loyalty. That is my job. Even if it costs me my physical life, my reputation, and and just the, the, my job. I mean, I've I've lost things not because I declared you to be the Hebrews. I've lost jobs. I've lost family members. I've lost um, um, privileges because I've declared the injustices. Now that I declare that you are the true Hebrew people, I know I'm going to suffer even greater things, but I don't matter to me because my faith is, is in the Most High Yah. My obedience is to Him. And just like Sister E said, I want my heart and my devotion to be, to be seen. They will know that I am a follower of the Most High Yah through my love. And one of those ways where I don't see evangelical white Christian love is towards you, my black brothers and sisters. Now, do I believe that because you're a natural born Hebrew by blood, that you have an automatic ticket to paradise or to eternity or salvation? I have to say, according to what I understand in scripture, I would have to say no. Because, because when, when the parable went out to invite his family, they rejected and they were left out. But then he said, invite anybody and everybody. And those came and they were the ones through faith were, were brought into the banquet. I also believe that scripture says that only two thirds of his children by blood will actually make it through this next season as I believe the Most High Yah is bringing the remnant together. I then consider myself a follower of the Most High Yah and I'm clinging or I'm being embraced by my Hebrew brothers and sisters who I believe the Most High Yah is going to restore, as he told Jacob, that, that your seed, that you would eventually be the head. And so because of that, you know, I'm, I'm also clinging on to you, and I believe that that's why you're going to be the head. And that's why I honor you in that position, because biblically, I believe it lines up that way. Now wait a second, because um, where Mike at right now? Where Mike Holloway at right now? Mike got to come on here and spoil the show. One third, e, one third. I want one third. Yes, yes. One. That's how I clicked on that. I want to. I want to get this on record. Virtuous truth. I want to get this on record for everybody that's in here. Sister E, do you believe in a hierarchy? There is a hierarchy in the kingdom. If you look at it, not every because, black Christian. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 I got to mute her right now. We're going to get her on record. We're going to get everybody on record. We're going to get everybody on record. No, you're going to explain. What you going to do? We want to make sure we, we're going to make sure we let everybody get on record. Who believes in this, on this, there's 500 people here. Do y'all believe in a hierarchy? A lot of people don't like that word. I said, well, you're going to definitely be able to tell Paul and Peter them from me. For me, I'm not gonna play myself, but a lot of people, a lot of black Christians too, a lot of black Christians are worried about y'all messianics. They're gonna get right, they're gonna get they're gonna make videos tomorrow on the moderates. Moderates believe in hierarchy. We knew we couldn't trust them, and Berean and all of them over there deceived. Come on, sister E. 
I'm with you, Sister E. I'm with you. But when we talk about hierarchy, you got to understand that he says they're going to be kings and priests in the kingdom. Who are they that, talking to? Who are they talking to? He's talking to Israel. But yet, and still, Israel is, is more than just being Israel. Because being an Israel, it's about to be receiving Hamashiach in your it's heart. Excuse me? Receiving Hamashiach, Christ, in your heart and walking in love. Hierarchy here, you're talking about a flip, you're thinking about fleshly hierarchy and spiritual hierarchy are different. Can we get out of carnality for a minute and understand there will be kings and priests in the kingdom? Am I saying I'm gonna be a king and priest? No, I will be happy just to, to clean the bathroom in the kingdom. Amen. That's my mindset. Amen. I don't care at this at this point. I'm here to do a work. If I'm yeah. concerned about the hierarchy, I miss the mark and I'm not a part of it because it's about a work. Being Israel has nothing to do with one flashing, showing who I am, being haughty, being being self righteous. It's about being humble, walking in love, doing a work. Because again. I have no concept of if I'm a part, if I'm not a part, if I could just make it into the kingdom, that's enough for me. But we cannot deny scripture when it does say there it will be a hierarchy. Again, I don't know who will it be, but yet and still, that's what you're talking. And, and woman, you're talking Amen. during the millennial not, reign. You're yes. talking about during the millennial reign. Definitely, yes. All right, not so that's good just for a thousand years. Yes, for the thousand okay. year reign. Okay, go ahead. Zidak. Am I saying uh, your name right? Uh, yeah, it, it's a doc, but I, 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 uh, most people pronounce it Zadok. Both okay. of them are right. We ain't, it's like Yahweh Shai <laughs> versus Yahushua. We ain't, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't even worry about all that, right? Um, first of all, I want to say many people are asking, why is this even important? I seen Prisoner from Hope had asked that earlier, and people keep bringing up in Christ there is, you know, no difference, this, that, and the third. I don't think people are fully explaining what the scripture means by in Christ. And when people talk about hierarchy, if you would allow me, Brother Berean, I just want, because we throw the word hierarchy around as if we just know what it means. I don't even think we know what the word means in English, all of us. So I actually got the definition right here, right? And if it's, and, and if it's plausible, I would actually like to share my screen just so I can show you all what the, what the word actually means, J you know, just real quick so that we don't lean into our own understanding as if we all know what this means, right? So let me go here right quick. I mean, Thank you to Super Chat, we appreciate you. Yeah, and as you're bringing that up, I mean, you, you look at Christ. I mean, Christ himself, you know, said, I'm here to do my father's will. So right there is, hopefully as we see it, a form of hierarchy. Hey, hey right here, everyone. Thanks, Brother Dana. Now, hierarchy is a noun. And it refers to a system or organization in which people or groups are ranked one above the other according to status or authority. So what, So right there, the definition shouldn't be something that's fearful. I think what happens is, is just like when, when we, uh, when some people with bad doctrine like to run to what it means for, um, excuse me, for God to say, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Romans, it doesn't right. mean that Edomites can't come unto the Lord. Uh, Christ says, "Whoever so who, whosoever doesn't hate his mother and his father cannot be my disciple. He's not saying hate in the sense of abhor. He's saying hate in the sense of love less. When the Bible says between Le uh, uh, Leah and Rachel, it said Jake, uh, Rachel was loved, Leah was hated. If we just take hate to mean one thing, then we mean like, yo, Jacob couldn't stand her. This, that, and the third. No, it's just that one was loved more than the other. So when hierarchy comes in, people automatically hear oppression. That's what they hear. That don't mean that's what the word means. You're going to have it's all about human beings here in their own minds because things have been said to them. This means that. That means this. Everyone in here who will run to Galatians, I said it when I was in here a couple of days ago. Every Christian male in here who has a Christian wife male will still female. run the first Corinthians 11 and put that right in her face and show a hierarchy of what God, God established the in the family yep. of Christ. Christ is the head of man and man is the head of the woman. That is hierarchy. Now, all guess what? Between all of those, you have a sense of there's a equality between a male and a female. And what happens is people actually make it seem as if hierarchy means not equal. 
That's not necessarily what it means because the father and the son, I believe most Christians would teach are even co-equal, especially anybody who would say they believe in the Trinity. You can't say Trinity without saying the father and the son are co-equals and you throw the Holy Ghost in there, add it 60 years later in the addendum at Constantinople from after Nicaea. If the father and the son, if the father is above the son, because that's how it was set between them and their foreknowledge, we accept that yet we don't see inequality. If the husband and the wife are equal, the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife, the wife have not power over her own body, but the husband, then because the hierarchy or the status and authority between them is set as such by God, how are you going to throw that out the window? Now, this look, is the look, read the screen. Yeah, I see the screen. So are you saying God loves one person than another? And thank you, Yolanda Malone, because I believe many people, that's that's why this had to be addressed because many people hear that. Hierarchy came up the other day with Elder Mike and uh and Apostle Jenkins on. Notice I never notice I never even dived into that. I let Elder Mike say what he had to say, and I stayed back because I'm a guest here and I'm new. This is what is the scenario. Many many of our brethren in church culture are not well studied in the entirety of the scripture. And so even when they think of the kingdom of God, they look at Revelation, they look at some things in New Testament letters, but the kingdom is first of all gonna be on earth. Secondly, there is something right. that's gonna happen. So I'll, I'll end it here. Do, uh, uh, Daniel seven says that this one on a cloud who came to the ancient of days was given a kingdom. And it says, and the dominion under the whole heaven is given to the people of the saints of the most high. And that kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and dominion, which shall not pass away. Right now, if you go and study the prophets, the prophets basically give the impression that all the nations of the earth shall be redeemed over this millennium, millennial reign that people call it according to what's written in Revelation. Christ or the spirit of God shall be known to be in Jerusalem. And the prophets say that people out of nations, many nations and tongues will come into Zion and will grab the skirt of one who is a Jew and say, we're coming with you because we heard the Lord is with you. And That's the millennial. We, let's, let's make sure this is the millennial reign. Yes, I don't know if Mike believe in that. We're talking that thousand year. I think I'm going to have to do thousand. something on the millennial reign alone for those in the body of Christ that believe that. Because the church is split on this also. Right. Go ahead. Like, you know, I mean, they could be split, but whatever is established in a millennial reign comes from how God looks at the nations from this side. And that's what people better understand. Mm -hmm. That's why in Revelation chapter seven, it names the 144,000 remnant, which is, I believe, in a more of an allegorical number first. And then it names. It, it don't even name, it describes an innumerable multitude out of all nations, peoples, and tongues. It like this. The nations shall bring, the kings of the nations shall come in and out of this city. So all the nations will still have government set up and they will have kings, meaning they will still have their rulership. Like Yahweh told the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, you won't get to touch Edom's land because I gave that to them for an inheritance. Don't even touch what I gave Moab. Don't touch what I gave Ammon because I gave them that inheritance before I'm even giving you yours. So in the idea of the nations redeemed, the hierarchy or the status of Israel is still firstborn. Why is Israel a firstborn among the nations? Because they're the first nation that God introduced himself to. And I'll end it here. When Paul says, what advantage didn't have the Jew? It says much in every way but chiefly that to them were given the oracles. Oracle. What people, all they concentrate on is the one example he gave and they ignored that he said a lot in many ways. And that hurts feelings only because the African American has possibly come into play. But I'm gonna tell you the reason I asked brother Dana that question is because with the spirit he's expressing it in, whether you believe him or not, I'm telling you, if he was convinced that the people over in the land of Palestine right now were those people, he would be as dedicated to seeing them hear the gospel and understand who they are. And like, yo, you can be part of the remnant among the firstborn of the nations if you would repent and believe in Christ. His dedication isn't to a skin color. It's to who he believed God's people is. And he feels like Paul felt about his own people. I wish 
all my oh. pins to the flesh could be Wait a minute. Before, before, yeah. before we get out of here, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing before we get out of here. Dana, Wait a minute, I'm asking you to... Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Dana, do you believe do you believe are you you are you speaking against those people in in that land i'm 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 speaking the truth that they're not who they think they are and i don't i'm not hating them personally because may they've been the uh in jeremiah it says that uh gentiles across the world one day will wake up and realize that their forefathers um taught them a bunch of lies that turned out to be really of no value. So, you know, my my desire is to to teach them the truth that they're the imposters that the Bible talks about, and uh, that you know our black brothers and sisters, uh, pe per people of darker hue, uh, are are the true chosen people. Sister and, E, same or same question, Sister E. What's the question again? <laughs> there are people over there. Them people over there, them people, are you speaking against them people in that land over there? Or you're saying that you've just been left out. Israel is a bunch of different people. I a never, come on. I never said that. I just said that God has a chosen people. You have to look at the signs of who they are. If they fit the signs of who they are, then they're the people. Do I think that they're over there? No, I don't. That's my opinion. Again, my opinion. I think that they are not. Am I going to persecute them? No. Because that's lack of love. Because yet it's still some of them don't even know what's going on right now. And we got to be real with it. Some of them don't even understand what's going on and the depth of what's going on. But do I believe? No. But does, does that mean that I love them any less? No. Because I still have to walk in the way that the Hamashiach wanted us to walk in love. Teach the gospel. He will separate the wheat from the tear. I can't. Okay, See, Zadok. Good, good, good. Zadok, you feel the same thing? Same question for you. What okay, you say, I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna, Sister Eve, that Sister E, that that just the way you spoke just lines up why I believe you're the chosen because the love flows out of you. Hey, 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 salute. I'll say this because uh, I actually got to go teach Bible study. I'm one minute late. I remember but, you said, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah, but 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 no, check this out. This does not, my statement is this, the children, the 12 tribes of Israel have been scattered to the four winds. If we believe Luke 21, the Jews were the last, the Jews got scattered twice. They got sent into Babylon. And then according to Christ's revelation in Luke 21, the Jews would be put into captivity among all the nations of the earth. The, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the 10 tribes have been out of the land as far as having any power in Northern Earlier. Palestine Earlier, yeah. for a long time. And I know that all Israelites may not look like me per se. So I'm going to go out okay. on a limb. I'm not saying there are no, possibly no flesh and blood descendants of Israel in the in land Israel. of Palestine. Okay. okay. But the Zionist government that was set up in the Belfort declarations that split the so-called Middle East up amongst France, Spain, Britain, the United States, and others, set them territory and brought some people from Europe into that land to claim it as their own. And today you got John Hagee and others running around saying that God's prophecy has been fulfilled and Israel is home. <laughs> we Zionism. don't believe yeah. that. But okay. anyone who is in the land of Israel and might be a proselytized Jew because they come from families that been into Judaism for a thousand years or more, fine. And some if never left the land repent, possibly, yes. Yes, if they repent and believe in Christ, then they can be saved just as I who believe I am flesh and blood Israel. Come but back. if they don't, then you know what's going to happen to them people when Christ come? According to Zechariah, yeah. you know what's going to happen? Not just that, but the controversy for Zion will be settled because right now Israel is not home. Christ prophesied that Israel will be put out the land and Jerusalem will be trodden under the Gentiles until the times of the nations come to an end. That's who's over there. The Gentiles are over there in Jerusalem underfoot. They can repent and believe the gospel and believe Christ, but that don't mean that they're the children of Israel the same way. And I'll end it here. We know for a fact that the people who inhabit and control Northern Africa as governments, Egypt right now is not being ran by the children of Ham, the children of Ishmael 
and the, some of the children from Persia have had control of that land for, for about a good thousand years or more. Yeah. So how come we can admit they're not? Well, because it's something else at play. So once again, I'm not saying there are no Israelites in the land, but the Zionist government that was set up coming out of Europe is not the children right. of Israel ethnically, even if some of them might believe Ooh. and be Israel in their heart. So I'm Fire. out. Fire. To y'all. I love y'all. And, and, you, and, and you know what need Thank to happen, you. Brother Marine? Now we need to have a conversation with some brothers about what hierarchy means. I believe we had to have a discussion because I think- Oh, Mike gonna be on tomorrow. Mike, gonna be, Mike ain't letting that go. Mike ain't yeah. finna let that go. Shout out oh, to him wherever he is. Mike. Oh, oh yeah, oh, Mike ain't gonna let that go right but, there. But this is why we do, this is why, it's yeah, I know, of course, that's my man. But but this, this, this is why we do what we do. This is why we do what we do. All right, bro, love you, man. Hit us right on. Wow. Hey, let me tell y'all something. Uh, uh, I am not in the mood for Elder Mike coming on here hooping. So no, no, I, I didn't say I didn't. tonight, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> you know he get nervous. He start hooping. So don't I heard you. I heard you in the comment section of Aston <laughs> Mike. You were all right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Anything? Anything else in closing? Anything else in closing? Ladies first. I think everything. You tell Yolanda. Good. See, and then he interrupt me. Y'all see that? I'm, just, okay. I'm gonna tell you something. Tonight was fire. I have nothing to say. My brother Zadok and my brother oh, no, Shana Mike, was Shana, on, Mike, Mike right here. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Was Shana. on mm -hmm. point. If you have this conversation about hierarchy, please let me know because I want to really have. I, Zadok said something that was so profound to me, and it changed my views and how me. we handle things. It's not about pushing the law and the word of God in people. It's understanding what it means, how to live, how it works in your life. I can't push. He talked about the young lady that was eating blood pudding. He said, I can't push it. I just showed her in the word and you will have to allow when I show you in the word, the Holy Spirit to teach you. Oh, you I mean from what you laugh? You mean yeah. laugh? Of, yeah. Yeah, 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 you gotta yeah. allow the, the thing is we can't push anything on anybody. We can only give it to them and allow the Holy Spirit to deal with them. And when he when he and he didn't say it quite like that, but when he said it, it kind of made me see things a little bit differently. I said this brother brought something to the table that everybody needs to see. I, as a person, feel like I have said, and we've all said what we needed to say about who we are. Now it's time to pull back and do the work that the Most High has put us into to do what? Teach the gospel. Teach people what repentance means. Teaching people to come out of sin and stop arguing about these things that people have not received. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to do work and not try to do the work of the Holy Spirit. So that's all I got to say. This was edifying and I loved it. So I'm going to be nice. I'm nice today, Brian. Don't start. Hey, yo, Mike. Hey, yo, Mike. I, I, I don't even want you to get on here to start rounding Sister E up because she'll get on. She'll get on her channel later on and go in for hours and took for two, three, four hours. And she no, 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 I don't. I don't go on that. You got to work them all. I, I got to work, but I don't go no four hours. I can give you an hour at the max, maybe an hour and 30 minutes. And then you but, start. Then you start wearing off. You got to drink. Yeah, I can go to sleep then. <laughs> all right, Brother Dana. Come on. Come on, Brother Dana. Talk uh, up. I'll tell you what, this this beautiful lady just, just said more than I need to say. So I appreciate Thank your heart, you. Sister Eve. Um, got a beautiful smile, and I know your spirit is incredibly beautiful. I can I, I sense it and, and that Thank you're you. over the most high yah. And and that is why I really get sad with my white evangelical family members. Because if they would only step back and maybe shut their mouth for a moment. And, and put aside their taught racist, stereotypical lies or whatever they are, they would get to experience what I experience all the time when I hang out with you, my black brothers and sisters. And, and, and it's, it's who you are as just a bunch of beautiful people. You are. And it's always an honor and a privilege for me to be on a show with you, but to I, I'm 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 the, one of the greatest things outside of salvation that I'm grateful for is this revelation, and that the Most High Yah saw fit for me to live my life serving you as my black brothers and sisters. And I know again that goes back into that hierarchy and that serving. Unfortunately, white evangelicalism has destroyed or made hierarchy or serve a bad term because we've turned it into I'm over you. So be quiet, you're less than me. 
again, that's why I just feel like Christianity with its white privilege supremacist teaching takes these words like hierarchy and and uses it because my white evangelical family members had no problem bowing down to the white current Jews. They they have no problem honoring them as God's chosen people. They sure but the only time they bring up this defense is when I mention that the true chosen are not those. Then they have a problem. Or, or it doesn't matter. We're not, you know, Hebrew or or this. We're all one in Christ. But yet you still fight against gay marriage. So obviously you still recognize there's male and female. You, recognize you know, that. so... You know, and I and I also recognize that the word says that there's going to be, you know, like like two sets of dishes, some used for common, some used for noble purposes. But I go back to, you know, what I believe Sister E and and my other brother that just left. It's 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 about your desire to serve the Most High Yah and serve His people, and when I say His people. I'm not just speaking about the blood Hebrew brothers and sisters. I'm talking about mankind. You know, I've just had the, the privilege and the honor to be specifically called to serve here in the inner city, who I now know are the precious chosen children of his. That's what he told me. And that's why I'll always resort back to them as my precious chosen family members. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, uh, it's just this was a, 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 a I need to get on that brother's Bible study too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he doing he doing some good stuff. He doing some good stuff. He'll definitely be on, and um, we'd love to have you on any time that you're free. You can jump on. Sister E already already knows she could jump on, and no matter she doing her thing over there. Do, do me said both of you give your information out to give your information out again for those that might not have been here for a part one. I don't have it as part one. I just have Dana Stevens part two, but there is a part one live with Dana Stevens. Um, give your information out. And I want Sister E to do the same thing. Mike, you up tomorrow if you're free. I'm not sure. I know you teach in the in the church too, but we want to um. We want to we want to deal with that imputed righteousness and stuff. So hopefully I can get you on tomorrow, um, Elder Mike. But come on, Dana, you, you uh, um, um, one love society dot love all words o n e l o v e society dot love. Um, you know, or if you go to to YouTube, you can just uh, put my name, Dana Stevens, S T E V E N S. Um, but. That's it. And Sister Eve, what a blessing you are. Thank you. Thank you. You're a blessing as well. I just hit you up on Facebook so you can know who I am because okay. we've been Facebook friends for a couple of years and you may not. I, I usually don't talk too much about. I don't know why I don't talk about my channel on my first Facebook page. But um, you can talk, are you going to talk about it? Here? I just told her to talk about I'm, it. Right I'm, here. I just told I'm, talking about I'm talking about my Facebook page. But oh. um, but Sister E, S-I-S-T-A-E, that's my channel. Uh, I'm getting ready to do something on Instagram here soon. I keep everybody posted. Um, and you can also catch me on Hebrew Sphere as well. Uh, let's talk with Sister E. If you've not subscribed to Dante's channel, I mean, uh, Dante's social media uh, page, please do. I am on there as well. And I have uh, also let's talk with Sister E on Facebook. So uh, Dana, it was y'all check out that Hebrew fair too. Shout out to Minister Dante and them. Shout out to Hebrew Ministries. Um, yes, um shout to Apostle. Brother. Shout out to Apostle. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Apostle Jenkins. Shout out to Bishop Brown and Jason Brown. Um, Zadok, you got his information. I know him from the rap freestyles and stuff on Facebook. You got his information. He'll probably um, I'm not sure because so many people teaching classes and got channels. He'll probably jump on tomorrow. I'm not um sure, but it's just if you have his information. You can uh, put it up there or say it. This is my first time coming across. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. Uh, coming across is Zadok, and he has mm. truly blessed me for the short time that I have seen him, and I'm gonna start following him. So I don't oh, know. I know. Okay. I know he's gonna be on Dante's channel. I can't remember when. Go after Dante's channel. He's supposed to be doing something with Dante this week. Um, okay. I'm trying to see Dante. Can you send me a message of when? I think it's this week. I just can't remember what date. 
I don't be, see him. Uh, he I'm said, not doctor. That, I don't know if he's any. I don't, I don't he, think I see him. No. I'm talking to him now. He said that uh, okay. he said, I'm doing a bill with him on tomorrow. So he's doing a bill with the doc on tomorrow. Wow. Yes, yes, the Hog Mob Ministries. That's correct. That's yeah. how I know him. Okay. Um. Yeah. Shout out to them. We go. We like I said. With that imputed righteousness. I'm gonna try to see if I get Mike to jump on. And, and a few people did hit me. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to Minister Dante on Shadow Yakoba Tail Ministries because a few people have been asking me about that 400 years and can we build more on that 400 years? Shout out to Alton. I'm not sure if he's in here, but there's people that have some questions. Besides some other people been wanting to hear some more about that. So we're gonna we we just here to build. We just here to build and share with each other and 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 do it in the love of God. Nobody going to hell for talking. And I I'm love have, that. And I'm gonna have Dana on my channel soon as well. Oh, um, okay, okay. I so thought you gonna say something. Interesting maybe. conversation. So I'm okay. having him on as well. I, I okay. Did the show, but uh, right now I'm blocked doing anything live on Facebook and YouTube. So I'm gonna have to do. You all gonna have to help me some way somehow. Oh no wonder! Look how you talking. As a matter of fact, let me get you off here right now. Talking about you block. I don't want to get blocked. Uh, -uh let me, I'm getting out of here, y'all. With that, I'm ending. May the Lord watch between me and you. I'm getting out of here right now. It's something wrong with 